Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I'm your host. And in today's episode, we're talking to Clint Bramston from Bamboo South Coast Nursery in New South Wales. So Clint owns a nursery, but it's not uh, just your standard nursery and he's not a standard nursery owner because he's also a qualified landscaper among other things. He's got a few different trades to his name and it uh, comes in handy for the work that he does around the nursery because it's... Uh, they do sell plants like a normal nursery, but it's also a bit of a display garden, a private garden, set on five acres on the south coast of New South Wales. And it's a pretty special place, exactly the type of plants that I love. It's kind of tropical there, but he also talks about how he's uh, recently got into succulents and cactus. Um, he'll talk about his love of the industry as well and why there's not more people in it or how he can't understand why there's not more people in it. And you'll find that he's certainly passionate about his job and that makes for a good recipe for someone who's successful, which he certainly is. And also can talk like previous guest, Graham Rowe. So hopefully enjoy this episode. Here's Clint Bramston. Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. I'm Joel Barnett, your host. And today we're joined by a landscape consultant and nursery owner at the Bamboo South Coast Nursery in Coolangatta in New South Wales, uh, Clint Bramston. Thanks for joining us, Clint. Thank you, Joel. It's, yeah, great to have you. Uh, so first, first thing I'd like to ask is how you got into the horticulture and landscaping industries to get to this point where you've got this incredible nursery in the South Coast. Um, so it all stems probably from my parents. Yeah. It was a bit of a, um, landscaping was a bit of a fallback sort of career for me, but um, yeah, I just, just, you know, eventually, Probably when I get to 25, I, you know, develop the real passion for it. And, um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's become a bit of an obsession now. So, so. Did, did your parents, were they working in the industry or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad's a landscape architect oh. and um, mum's just a palm collector, you know, yeah. plant lover. So it's, um, yeah, it's kind of yeah, in the blood, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right from birth pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's not, doesn't feel like a career anymore. Yep. It's just a your passion you know i'm lucky enough to be able to do what i love and and yeah get paid for it as well i guess yeah that's always handy and coming to a place like this that's yeah. not bad either yeah no it's a good it's a good place to be and live you know so are you have you done like any qualifications for horticulture um or? yeah i did horticulture operations when i was 16 so it's 24 years ago yeah um and i've done parks and gardens um, and then just various other kind of things along the way. Like I've done um, commercial irrigation, I've done electrical engineering oh. um, and just, you know, worked with tons of different landscapers along the way. And sort of picked up my own, did paving for about four years, at, you know, when I was younger and sort of picked up that trade. I, did, well, I didn't do a trade in it, but I just, you know, got the eye. That's where I got the eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was all, you know, structural stuff that just paid the bills at the start and then, you know, the plant kind of thing came later. So, you know, having the having the landscape sort of stuff's been a really, really big benefit, like, in what I do now, you know. Being able to, like, know about structural and, you know, how, you know, hard surface hard surfaces fix in with soft surfaces is, you know, it's everything really. Yeah, and I find that helps a lot uh, when you're doing it design to consultants oh, you man, know yeah. you know how things are built as well so that helps yeah, yeah. i always find that designers who have done um, yeah. some sort of construction uh, yeah. there's are a lot easier to build anyway and they seem to work a lot better like there's obviously some some architects know mm. a lot more but yeah it's in there's a rule of thumb somebody who's worked in the uh, construction side both yeah, yeah a lot of the time like, it's either one or the other it's you know like guys or girls or whoever go to TAFE and that and you learn all you learn all the hard stuff and then as you know, you don't you the plants that are a sideline, they're not you're not interested in. Them. So to be able to do both is, you know, is something that the the industry could definitely improve on, I think. You know? Yeah, it's interesting you say that because there's um when I did my apprenticeship I did uh, a certificate three in horticulture with landscaping brackets and there was so there was actually nothing to do with landscaping. Yeah, they yeah, just all yeah. threw everyone in the one in the one yeah. group. And I know, uh, I think it's Semkin Landscaping in Melbourne, they um, send their apprentices to do a horticulture certificate because they can teach them everything, yeah, landscape, yeah. construction on site. Yeah, yeah. But they, so they go to learn about plants, so they're a lot better well-rounded. So I don't know if they still do that or 
Yeah. Well, I tend to, I, I've got a few, fair few staff and I tend to, I'm going to keep my crew doing landscape construction because they, that stuff is, you know, pretty critical to learn in this, in our field. Um, they become really good landscapers, good eyes. They do a lot of welding. We do a lot of concreting, you know, structural stuff, but here they learn the plants. Yeah. They learn everything about plants. Like, you know, obviously it's good to have, know a bit of botany and a bit of, you know, bit of science, but they can kind of pick up the necessary things along the way. We mostly do exotic, unusual stuff, but you know, we, we use a lot of natives, you know, we, you know, so it's, it's really good to have an all, all round on it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you have, uh, how many staff do you have out here? I've got seven at the moment. All yeah, right. Yeah. And do you put any of them through an apprenticeship? Yeah, yeah, I've got two. I've got one that's just finished and another one. And then, you know, there's possibility of more along the way. You yeah. Know. And is that in landscape construction? Yeah, landscape construction. Yeah. Construction, yeah. 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 So how long have you had the nursery for? Uh, I've been here for six years now. Um, but I've been, I had another one probably for the last 12 years or so. So, yeah, a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the industry a long time. Like, yeah. Enough, you know, to get a bit of a feel for it. And, you know, oh, we've kind of created our own little thing here we're not like a standard nursery or anything yeah, we're exactly. really it's it's really just a a private garden that's essentially w what it is it's my you know it's my passion and whether people come in here or not it doesn't really matter yeah um and you know i just it's the contacts that and the people that i know now that i can um that they just contact me because you know all my guys because we have the knowledge and we have the plants so yeah, it's easy to to fill any order when you can, when you know, you know where to find it. Yeah. You know? So is that how you get most of your plants? Is people contacting you saying we've got this large? Yeah, yeah. To dig out. It's large and small. Oh, yeah. People contact me for the trees to dig out. You know, but um, but yeah, I do just I do a lot of buying, buying and selling. Like you know, I deal yeah. with I deal with thousands of people. Yeah. Which is you know like, it's not for everyone, but you know I I just I truly love people. I love dealing with people. Like yeah. I love meeting and talking and. Anyone that knows me knows I'm hard to get off the phone, but um, you know, you know that's essentially what it's all about for me is just networking and and um, knowing where to get stuff. Yeah, you know, on demand. And that's something you have to build up over time. I yeah, as well, it's it's taken this long now, and I finally feel like now that I can sort of you know I've got enough contacts so I can do anything. You know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, it's one of those things like when you get in business. You know, you get to a certain level where you could probably just walk away and start again and be like, in a year, you'd be back up, yeah, you know, yeah. with the people you know. You know, that's, it's, it's, if you could go back and tell yourself that at 25 and say, this is what you need to do. Yeah, but you need to have that knowledge. Yeah, you need, you need, I mean, it's, it's relationships and history too. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's been good to me. And how do you go? How have you found like running your own business with employees? Um, I natural? have no trouble with it because yeah. the, my mind races a million times an hour, and I kind of enjoy it. I, you know, I need it. I need the excitement. But yeah. um, yeah, like staff management's probably my biggest issue, like, along with probably a lot of other business owners. Yeah. But um, no, we 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 have a lot of laughs. It's just a, it's just an all day banter. Yeah. So. That keeps everyone excited, fun, and I'm pretty easy going. We have like, you know, yeah, we, we have a lot of fun stuff going on. So, yeah, yeah, it makes it um, easy for your staff to come to work as well. Actually, want to be there. So. Yeah, yeah, they all want to be here, and you know, we all, we're, we all, you know, everyone's got their own characters, and I kind of let everyone do their own thing. And um, yeah, no, if anyone, if anyone here that works with us is unhappy, I generally get a pretty quick feel of it. And yeah try and sort it out, you know, so there's no, you know, no conflict or I guess that's essentially what, you know, the, your labor is your whole, is everything. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. That's, there's, yeah, I had that trouble. You can, um, you might make more money working for yourself, but it's not, not sustainable. Yeah. You like, can't, you can't do it on your own. Exactly. Yeah. And people like it, like people comment all the time on my guys and say how good they, how helpful and, you know, lovely they are to, you know, loading things in cars and giving people advice and stopping. Like we, you know, we'll always take the time for people. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a really you know, 
that gets into a lot of work, I think. Yeah. Too, and the end referral. The human, the human yeah. yeah, because the people just want to deal with nice people. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, and reliability and honesty as well, you know, like, that's kind of, you know, it's everything. Yeah. So, so yeah. have you always been on the on the south coast, New South Wales? Yeah, yeah, this is home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, Kiama, you know, that's home. So yeah. I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I'm in the, in the within reach of, you know, where I grew up. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, but yeah, I love Shoalhaven. It's really, I love the climate. It's really good for plants. Even, even like such a cool environment. This all this really hot, tro this tropical stuff yeah. does really well here. And and at this time of year, in you know, yeah, we're coming on to winter. Everything yeah. looks its best. And and I say to people, February, Mark, everything. Everyone thinks February is growing time. Everything just sits dormant here in February. It's Why just, is that? It's like it's too hot. Yeah. Right. Everything goes into like survival mode, but then now when it's cool at night and it's warm, this is, I mean, I'm just, this is just me observing the garden yeah. every day. Yeah. Things grow now, which indicates that they, you know, plants are okay with the cool climate. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. They look their best. Yeah. Summer and winter, they'll sort of pause and then do the grow yeah. when it's perfect for them. They just don't like freezing cold. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, like we don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, that, uh, there's a Bismarckia palm. Behind yeah. it, which is one of my favourites. Mm. Um, it's one of them. Someone's growing down in Geelong, and it's just yeah, it's, wow. It's looking a bit brown, like oh, they must have yeah, pulled yeah, them down yeah. or something. Um, but I went to Singapore a few years ago at the gardens oh, by the bay, yeah. and saw there's like an absolute group of them there. That yeah. just looks incredible. They do like the humidity, you know. Yeah, is something that we don't have here, so we kind of miss that. But then, with humidity, you know, comes bugs and comes disease yeah, as well. So. Um, there's good things in that too, but you know, I, I like the challenge of it anyway. Yeah. I mean, half the fun is, you know, these been, these have been very expensive gardens because I've been this kind of test dummy yeah. and there's so many, I've bought so many palms from Noosa and Cairns and Darwin and they've just, you know, they've carked it and then I just bury them, <laughs> you know, you get to terms with, um, you know, just cutting your losses and trying again kind of thing. You just can't give up because yeah. it is really, it's really, really daunting when you put a whole lot of stuff in and it doesn't do well. Just try again. Yeah. Well, when I called you initially, I told you how I know Lyle down at Raymond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he's got a, it's not the same as this, but it's like a collector's kind of garden yeah. as well. Yeah, um, and it's it, amazing. Yeah, he's, he trials different planter as well. Like I don't know yeah. that Calathea Zabrina. Yeah, try yeah, that to see if, it, if it's lived over yeah. winter, but, which it didn't. But that's marginal there. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just pushing the boundaries, and yeah. then you work. Then you become an expert in where it can grow, where it's not supposed to grow. Which is yeah. Good. Well, now, fine. Like I finally got into con contact with some of these guys that I, you know, needed to be. In, you know, they're uh, plant nerds as well. Yeah. And um, to to spend four or five hours with people like that, you kind of you get a real you it, it, you know it puts the puzzle together a bit with plants because um, they yeah they exactly what you said they say no they won't grow here yeah but it do, does really well here so you know there's somewhere in between where it's kind of going going to survive but but yeah if it doesn't you know but and another thing is some some of the african stuff does really well down there but it won't do well here yeah right. it, they, there's no humidity in the air here but they just don't survive like it's too it's too wet. It's not Africa. You know? Yeah, you do get a lot of rainfall here, don't you? We when it's on, it's on. It rains and yep. rains and rains. Um, I got a really good friend, um, John from Cactus Country, um, in Strathmerton, and he came out to visit. Uh, he's been out and stayed a few times, but the last time he came out and visited, it hadn't rained for like nine months, and then all of a sudden it started raining. But it rained for heavy for three weeks, and he came and he just went, "Does it rain here like this all the time?" He couldn't believe his eyes the water that was just coming down, and like it just blew his mind because they wouldn't get that rain out there. You know? No, no. So he was worried about the cactus. He said, "I don't know how this stuff survives here, but I'm like, you know, it doesn't rain like this too often. So it just doesn't rain for nine months, and then it pours." Yeah. So yeah, it's really. I mean, the, the east coast of Australia is a tough climate. It's just, that's why grass, xanthoreas and, you know, acacias and, you know, wistringia 
you know, plants like that grow along the coast because they just, they sit in the dry, you know, they're windswept and drought tolerant and bushfire proof, you know, yeah. like it's just, it's been like that for thousands of years. Yeah. You know, so. That when you came out, when you started the nursery, what was the, the idea behind doing that? Like, did you have, um, did you just start collecting your own plants? Or I kind of didn't really expect it to turn into this. I didn't know. I just, you just kind of like, you know, live every day in a crazy state and just do everything you can, you know, and push the, push the envelope a little bit, push the boundaries, I guess. And um, yeah, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now I'm kind of feeding the monster a little bit, but it's allowing me to have a bit more freedom with stuff. I take risks now, whereas I didn't. 10 years ago. And what's the reason for that? Um, I guess probably, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Just the risk, get, every, you just get bigger and more confident. And um, yeah, I guess it'll all be all right in the end, hey? Yeah. You know? Well, if it's not, you just try again. Yeah. And I'm not going to live forever. So <laughs> what the hell? What, what do you got to lose? So. Yeah, I'm going to see where I can take it. It's just sort of the only scratch the surface now, really. Like I'm going to try new things. And now um, with design, we're really adventurous, you know, like whereas I wasn't before. And you, 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 it's like being, it's being an artist. That's what it yeah. is. You just know, you, you can see the colours and you know what ones to put together. You know what works. So you try a new one and then, you, yeah, it's great fun. I'm having a ball. So do you use a program for your design or? Uh, I, I do hand sketch yeah. still. Yeah. And I I don't, I don't spend, because I'm so fast spread, I just, I'll do maximum four hours on a sketch kind of thing. Yeah. It's all I've got. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I've got to work really quickly. So I've kind of got to, you know, and, and hence one of the reasons why I've got so many plants. I've got so many different plants. If I get stuck, I'll go for a walk around. I'll clear my head. I'll go for a walk around, and I'll and I'll go. Oh, you know, I'll, yeah. that'll work. That combo, and and it's it's only having all this here that I can start to really, really take some risks. You know, um, yeah. Plus, I do. I travel a lot. Like when when I can. Yep. I'm all over the world all the time. Like four to six times a year, kind of thing. Normally. Cool. Would have, been, um, would have been hard with COVID then. Now it's just Australia. Yeah. Which is kind of fortunate anyway. And yeah. did you aim at tropical areas, but or? No, no, no. I've only, last probably three months. I've, no, no. Sorry, two years, I reckon. I've really got into cactus. Thanks, Graham Rowe, for that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I always said I'll never get into cactus, like an aloes and a garbs. I, just, yeah. I had no interest in it. Um, and um, now I'm just obsessed. Now I just like can't get enough. You know, I love, I guess it was always a bit of a scary thing, you know, to learn. It's like learning a new language. When you see all this new language, you're kind of like, oh, it's too hard. But when you learn a word or two or three, it's kind of, oh, they all piece together. So it's, it's like that with a new plant for yeah. me. And, like and, and after a while, you learn how to learn. So you just... It, it was nothing scary anymore. So yeah, cactus was probably the best thing ever, being able to identify, you know, those kind of plants, all these new dry plants in Africa. And I, I was fortunate enough just before COVID to visit Africa. I spent cool. a month over there and um, just blew my mind, changed everything. And I was just plants, every, it was just amazing. So that's kind of changed my view on things. And even the climate, you know, the, you kind of, um, yeah, you just see that, you know, how everything's growing over there. They haven't had rain for years. Yeah. And then they come here and they're like, what's everyone going on about? <laughs> so that, did that open up a new list of supplies you started getting plants from or did, did some have? No, uh, yeah, 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 it did. When it comes down to it, yeah, because you start going, getting into this. There's, there's guys that just have acres and acres of cactus, you know, like, um, just like me with the bamboo when I started and palms are, and tropicals, that's what I, all I had and all I really cared about. Yeah. Now I'm like, it's my whole world's changed. Now I'm everything, any plant. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of go well together in terms of being, uh, there's a lot of, uh, 
rare varieties, like a lot of collectible. Plants. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cactus that don't look like cactus too, that, that are like, you know, um, you know, that don't have spines and yeah. uh, really colourful. And they they will go perfectly well in with a tropical garden. Like, so all the rules are kind of gone out the window now. And and I see when you when you see some of these really really good designers, the the, the kind of Einstein's of design garden design, they'll just use stuff from, you know, these Australian natives, these African plants, these Californian stuff, these stuff from Europe, and you know. Just a mix or whatever, and then then in the midst of all this jungle, we have like buxus balls or portulacaria or some kind of creeping, whatever. And it all works. It's all it all just just an art, you know. Yeah. So that's for, for me. That's the, that's the fun of it now is like the, all the rules, and I try and project that to people. I try and say, stop thinking like I just have to have a native garden or I have yeah. to have this type of garden. Just do what you want, you know. So do you have, do you have to knock back some clients if they're um, their ways or? Oh, I don't, I don't knock back. I just like, if it's not my, it's not something that I'm going to spend all my energy and my love and passion on, then I'll put them onto someone that, that is more suited. Yeah. And that, and having that network of landscapers and designers and everyone that I know, I can now like, I tend to dish out work and kind of be a bit of a, you know, might be a new business avenue. Yeah, well, that does help connecting, bringing it back in as well. Yeah, if that, if you're giving them the work, then they'll handle. Yeah, it. they just it just goes around in a big circle, and the more people you know, and the more people you have, the more friends you have, then yeah, the less sleep you have. <laughs> that's how it works. You're just enjoying the, a place like this. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's my you know that's everything for me. Like you know, I, I'm I couldn't I couldn't care. The, mo the money is good, but it just buys me plants. It just buys me, it just pays for edging and pathways and pays all my guy or every my crew. And, you know, mate, you know that's all. It doesn't, that's I it. don't have that sort of drive for a Ferrari or anything like that. Yeah. You, know. you can't take your money with you, so you might as well enjoy oh, it. Oh, yeah. Well, you got oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did, I put a question uh, on Instagram to see if anyone had any questions. I put a post. Uh, yeah, 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 cool. Had one question come through. Yeah. I'll just have to, I'll just get it. Yeah. Um, and make sure I get the wording correctly. Yeah. Uh, you might know who it came from. Uh, it says, who's the most hospitable landscape designer in Melbourne to stay and drink beers with? Oh, uh, I know who it is. Brent. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so Brent Legend. from Candio. Yeah. He'll be a guest later on. Yeah, so, cool. But, um, yeah, that's a, a same hey, mate. It's just... <laughs> Making yeah. relationships like that, yeah, like amazing. It's a state yeah. as well, just because yeah. you're bonding over that love of plants. Yeah, amazing. Like, and, and sometimes it's it's only like it can be like a meeting for thirty seconds for me. I, I, I one of my things is character. Like, I just you know I see right through people. Like, and I don't I don't see bad in people. Or like, so like you can really connect with people instantly. Yeah. And the other thing is I, I haven't seen him for what. Two years, maybe now, I think, and it'd still be like if I saw him, it'd be like yesterday. So yeah, you know that, and, and all people I hang around are like that, you know. Do you find Instagram has helped with that? Do you spend um, much time on there? Yeah, definitely. Instagram is a big thing. Yeah. Um, um, it's very inspirational for people when they see, you know, quite often. If I do a really good post, then I'll get people flooding me with messages and I'm super sorry if I don't get back to everyone <laughs> but um yeah that, it's been a big thing for you know it's it's you know super easy you can almost not have a website nowadays and just run off Instagram but yeah. um you know some days I get a bit like I just disappear from it because yeah. it's just you know life's too much like it's too much going on but um it's it's a good thing to you know you know connect all types of people from all over the world yeah yeah, and then so again, bonding over that same passion. Yeah, people. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and like, yeah, connecting with, you know, and seeing other people's work too, and like, and what they're doing right now. Yeah, you know, that, that's kind of, yeah. Social networking has been amazing for everyone, I guess. You know, um, yeah. So, I'll probably, I don't know, I, I, I you know, with social networking platforms, I always often wonder if they've got a bit of a, a, 
a date, you know, like a, in a bomb date yeah. that's going to go off. But um, Instagram seemed to last the strongest out of all of them, you know. You haven't still got a MySpace page, have you? No, no. I haven't done anything else really. Like MySpace, yeah. Good. That was before Facebook. I mean. Oh, geez, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Facebook's kind of changed too now. Like, I don't think people use Facebook as much. But I think the, the age demographic does. I think they're older people. Like not don't older, use it. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, like probably 45 plus. Mm, so. don't, don't use No, Facebook. they do use it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, mum and dad still go on Facebook, me and that. And I'm like, I don't even have it anymore. Yeah. Why so yeah, younger people seem to be on um, TikTok or Snapchat. Yeah. Everyone seems to be on Instagram. Yeah. I think that's why it's a bit more popular. But that could be yeah. because I... I'm on it, so I feel like it's more popular, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. twenty-year-olds here are all TikTok and that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm all right. They're my ten-year-old is as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Ooh, what's that thing there? <laughs> I'm, I don't want to get mind. on there because no, I spend enough time on Instagram. So I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, need another one to add to the mix. Yeah, no, Instagram's amazing. It's really, really good. Yeah. Um, do you have a plant that you're trying to grow here that you haven't been able to yet that you're uh, not giving up on? Yeah, let me think about that one. I'd probably have to go for a walk and find it because there's so many plants here that I do often walk through the garden and go, oh, yeah, that's, you know. Um, so that I'm trying to grow that I'm struggling with. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Um, something that yeah, you're trying to get to grow in this climate. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, work, I'm trying to work out Adansonia, which is a boab tree, the true boab tree. Um, it's been, it's survived and it's, um, it's thrived this year and I've, it's been through a few winters, but it's very marginal here. They like the tropics, you yeah. know, they like the wet and dry season. Yeah, it's like the opposite here. We'll get a wet winter and a dry summer. So it's not, it's kind of the opposite, but they've done really well. The other one that I'm still working on and I've been growing it for a long time is Pacopodium or Madagascar palms. Yeah. Um, they're another... They're another one that's a bit kind of, you know, I grow all these big ones and then all of a sudden one of the big ones will just melt down and rot and disappear and I just can't work it out. Yeah. I just keep them dry and drainage and they just fall apart. But then again, all the little ones, everything thrives. But So I'm still kind of trying to work it out. So that, yeah, that. And then a then ton of rare stuff that I've got, you know, that I'm playing around with. But And I'll, I generally won't sell stuff until I... I I know everything about it yeah. because um, I just don't like anything dying in anyone else's hands. Um, yeah, I don't know. You had a friend of Penny's go here. They're one of Great. my favourites. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. We grow tons of frangies. Yeah, got all different colours. Cool. They're all off now. Yeah. So it's all it's um, May now. Yeah. Yeah. May. Yeah. yeah. Halfway through May. I don't even know what day it's Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so they've all dropped. They're all pretty much some of the big ones in the ground hold on, but um, yeah, we go. I've got a, um, a hot pink, which is my favourite. It's a really fluoro one, and um, and then just the whites tend to be the strongest here. But I don't know. Can you grow them down there? Uh, if you keep them in a pot, like there'd be people who've got them in the ground that and then indoors. Them alive, but um, yeah, yeah, keep them in a pot. Like I had one I used for garden show. I think it was two thousand and seventeen. Yeah, uh, and that was so I kept that in a pot, and that had flower every year. Yeah. Leave really? Out. Yeah. And then bring it in? Uh, no, I left it outside. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Well, that's good. So I don't know if it's if they get, I don't know, whatever, if they, if wherever they are, where they come from, so up, further up north. Than oh, they're they like. If they're flowering and then they. Hawaii and, you know, but dry, like volcanic drained soil that's still yeah, fairly where, high. Wherever, they, like, if you get the plant, it's already started its life flowering, if then that, then you, it kind of keeps that going. Whereas uh, less likely to if it grows. What? Know. Sorry, sorry. Like so, because they the plant didn't start its life in Geelong. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you moved it down, yeah. and then it's sort of confused. Yeah. yeah, they adjust pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's all about survival. That's it. Yeah. If they're outside their margins, they just cark it. But um, yeah, no. They if you if you can grow it in a pot, you probably could grow it better in the ground because it's more stable in the ground. Yeah. So usually it's the opposite with things potted here really struggle like frangipanis in pots don't do well frangipanis in the ground here over winter do much better they're much faster to shoot back the ground's a more stable temperature you know yeah um yeah but it's worth trying 
Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and yeah. the whites will be the best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Love they stuff. don't probably with Darwin red or anything like that. You know, like they're just so, you know. But, um, yeah, great tree. Yeah. Have you got a favourite plant? Um, probably, um, I'd say favourite plant would be the blue yucca or yucca rostrata. I still love the plant. I just love its habit and I love its slow growing and the blue colour is amazing and it's super drought tolerant. Um, but yeah, that's like, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's like, fa what's the favourite colour? I don't yeah. like 10 favourite colours, you know. Um, and I like some, I like Dracaenas, you know, if it was just coming down to sort of, um, yeah, yeah, I'd probably say Dracaenas. I love Philodendrons as well. So Dracaena Draco or, or like all? Uh, Draco's kind of the base model. Yeah. Um, I like the Cambodianas. I like um, Cochin Chinensis, which is a green, an Asian kind of dragon tree. It's like a tropical green. It's basically a dragon tree. Like this is a dragon tree here. Yeah. Just, just seen a Draco, Canary Islands. But then there's varieties that grow more in tropical Asia and they're, real, they're much the same. They're really green cool. and they grow not so, um, so architectural. They're more just like a random like a bit like a marginata cross to the Draco, oh, yeah. um, but really, yeah, really quirky and just unknown here, you know, no one, every, yeah. everyone knows these, but no one knows them. So I, I tend to kind of go for things like that. Yep. Um, and yeah, there's a few other ones. Um, um, yeah, a few other ones, but yeah, I won't probably go, let's talk all night about them, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'll be, I'm bouncing back to uh, the nursery again, but yeah. um, so when you started, did you do any advertising or do you still do any advertising? Um, I've never really been big on advertising. I'm, I find the best, the best is just people, you know, like people tell people. Yep. So if you do, um, there's an old saying, it's, you know, it's come up a million times, but you, you know, if you do one good job, you might get another job. If you do, do one bad job, you know, people will tell 10 people you know yeah so we just do we just try and do good jobs all the time it's you know and, and the guys and girls that work for me it's often get the shits with me pulling out jobs or more you know moving plants a centimeter so that they're all perfectly in a row and they all get upset about it but when at the end of the job they just go wow that looks you know Understand everyone everyone loses it over it when it's all perfect but yeah. at the time it causes stress so um what i'm what i'm ranting about is that when you do stuff like that and people notice and then you end up with this huge network of you know the type of customer that you want yeah but at the start it's tough you can't just do that you can't survive off that so you do have to do a little bit of advertising but um, I guess essentially we still advertise because we still use Instagram. I've still got a website. Yeah. So I'm still bringing in new customers. But um, yeah, the, the good ones come from good, you know, we, I tend to meet a good group of people and then their friends become your friends, you know? Yeah. And then all the other ones don't really kind of matter. You choose who you want to hang out with, don't you? And do you sell, what sort of percentage? Do you sell online as opposed to direct? Oh, we don't sell much online. Man. Nah. Like we 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 get a few contacts online, and quite often I'll get people that just ring me and who've heard that we sell because we we sell really good quality stuff. That we're really really fussy with it. It's all everything's. We try to get things as perfect as possible. So people who know they just ring an order, and you know, but. I'll get ones, I'll get people that'll ring up and want 50 photos and they just don't have that trust and they end up, I just don't bother following through with the sales. I yeah. just deal with yeah. the ones. We've got enough that know that we sell good stuff that they just, they just take it, you know. Yeah. Um, and that, and that becomes the core of the business is now focusing on getting the good stock and getting that to the good buyers. That's, that's the core of it all. It's not finding more. I don't need more. I just need, you know, to maintain that. Yeah. And, and it becomes how big do you want to get? You know, you get too big and you can't you can't keep everyone happy. Yeah, because usually the quality goes down. Yeah, the quality goes down. Yeah. 
And you see it in big nurseries, in huge nurseries. There's like McDonald's. Yeah, there's so many. You could say it about a lot of businesses as well, like landscape yeah. companies. Like they've got, especially now, that everyone, everyone's so busy, so they'll yeah. put on more staff, and then their yeah. quality goes down. They end up fixing up mistakes. Yeah. And your products, the products become plastic. I've already come to that decision where I can really supply big numbers of things, but they're not that great. Yeah. You know, because they're grown on mass. You know, and no one's spraying them, and no one's, you know. So I don't know. I just don't want to do it. Yeah, that's it. You know, like you, do, you want to do what you've done to get yourself in this place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and when it when it gets too big, and I mean, you just end up feeding the monster. It just yeah. gets so big that like, what do you need? What do you need all that money for anyway? Besides getting bigger. And it's not you don't necessarily make much more money either. You just work harder to uh, feed more people. Yeah, you, if you do it right, you do. Yeah. But then what do you do with it? Like. I guess, like, I know it's a, it's everyone's kind of dream thing to be able to do, but it's not, doesn't work like that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's really, really important that you just, you know, you just stay in that bracket, I think, you know, not get too big, but. Yeah. Yeah, that's my theory anyway, but some people do really well out of going big, you know? Yeah, yeah, same, yeah, like I say, with landscape companies, some would, like, off, I'm at uh, a good point now where I don't, yeah. don't want to get any bigger because then you can't yeah. control everything as much. But um, yeah. yeah, some have more than 20 guys on, so. Yeah. Each to their own. I guess for the for landscaping, like, um, because I, it's, I've got a really good insight to landscaping because I am a landscaper. I've done it for a long time. Yeah. And I talk to landscapers, all my friends, have all of them, all over Sydney, Melbourne, everywhere. I talk to 50 a day. So, and I often say, what are you up to? You know, like, what are you doing? And then, you know, I was doing this pool stuff and, you know, whatever, technical stuff. And so you get a feel for what people are doing. But um, the best ones are the ones that stay small and boutique and charge really well, yeah. but are like really good at what they do and getting better at what they do. Mm. So um, th those guys are booked forever. You just can't get them, you know? Which is, I reckon, amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's and I, I I find it hard now that when I recommend people, I you know people call me and they're like, we've got this beautiful house on the water and we want a really good landscaper. Like, who do you know? And I say, oh, this guy is the best, but you might be waiting nine months for him. So there is a bit of a hole there. I think. I mean, there's a, there's another hole, you know. For do you mean in people who in Companies you can do things quicker than the one. Oh no, I just think that there's probably I'd hate to say it, but there is room for more trades like landscapers and even pool builders and stuff, like good ones. Yeah. Um at the that might just be at the moment because the building industry's going berserk, but um yeah, I don't know. I think it could um yeah, it could it's 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 destined to get bigger. Yeah. Australia is growing. It's a rich country. Yeah, I don't know whether it's... It, I reckon it would depend on different areas, but I know um, in my area that there's always, like, not just because of the current situation, but there's always been room for the, the yeah. higher-end companies. There's, oh, there's, there's not a lot. I mean, yeah, I, I think... I worry sometimes, oh, it's getting a bit quiet now, and then I go into the city, and there's, like, they're building 500 homes. Yeah. And there's, like, massive developments, and they're digging mountains and hills out, and building, like... There's... there's yeah the country's booming yeah. but then then in the bottom end of it it might be like there's nothing happening you know people aren't they're scrounging for the three five thousand dollar landscape like so i mean i guess there's there's room for everyone yeah you know? and there's still money in those little five hundred dollars two hundred two thousand dollar jobs Absolutely. like i probably made a lot of a lot of my money from doing i remember doing a job for four hundred dollars for for an old lady in a retirement village, just wanted a bit of paving. She couldn't get anyone. And I, I had a look and I thought, $400, yeah, that's pretty good. And that's, you know, on my own, half a day. I go in, I, you know, buckle into it, you know. You got good eyes, you can do it really quick. The half day work, 400 bucks. Then she's happy as well. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, you know, um, when you've got a big team, you can make money like that, obviously even if you're not doing as much, but, you know, you can still make good money on those little ones. Yeah. yeah. And the less can go wrong as well. Just, yeah, less can go wrong. Yeah. 
Even though I remember stressing over little jobs like that. I remember stressing over four hundred dollar job that took me half a day, and now I just think it's like it's not even anything. It's just what you're stressed about now. Yeah. Oh, the stress. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Now it's ten thousand dollar aloe tree yeah. going into Vaucluse on a crane, and I've got fifty people there waiting to put it in. Like this stuff, and now I still don't stress about that. Yeah. Right. You know, because I know what to do. I know who to call and yeah. and when to call them and. You just organise everyone and it all happens smooth. There's never a problem. You just don't let the problems happen. Yeah. But, from, yeah. And, and that's from getting experience in. That's just, yeah, it's just knowing what to do. You don't, you, you don't have to go, you don't have to read the, the checklist anymore. You just know the checklist. Yeah. So, yeah, it kind of, it gets fun. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah it would be, one like that would be nice to see going as well. Yeah, yeah. Pretty big feature. No, it's a, it's a really, really, really good, you know, if there's any, like, you know, budding or people leaving school or, you know, that are listening to this, it's a really, really good industry to get into. It's not, you're not just a landscaper anymore. You're, you're an artist, you know. So it's such an exciting, and, and you can make great money. You can make more than a doctor, you know, like if you know what you're doing and you enthusiastic and you you can soak things up like a sponge then yeah it's amazing and I find for me being active like I have to be active I'm really fit I keep really fit and I eat really well and I'm like active all the time and that to me is 10 times better than being a bookworm like when I do my admins or I'm doing business yep. um, I feel better when I'm out on the tools I've, I'm I'm on the barrow with all the 20 year olds, you know, like at least once a day I'm out there doing something and moving, lifting pots and I just, that keeps the blood flowing and keeps you alive. So, yeah. and I'm on the ground, you know. Yeah, you're getting paid to do exercise. So yeah, well that's that. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's, you know, yeah, that's a, it's a really, really good thing. Uh, yeah. I was, the, I was listening to the Landscape in Victoria podcast, the last one they did, they had someone on from TAFE. Uh, and they were like questioning why there aren't more people trying to get into landscaping because there's such a variety of yeah. things to do. Like, that is crazy. I guess it's something, I guess when it gets to that, it's all it is is someone's got to come along and make it exciting and make it fun and make it like, I've often thought sometimes, this afternoon actually, I took a little bit of footage because I had all my crew, there's six of us, and I just took a video of all the banter and the fun and all the cool stuff stuff that everyone was just they're so wacky yeah and i just thought this is what if people saw this stuff yeah. they would actually want to be here you know like because it's really really it's so fun yeah and i think that's probably all it needs you know is someone to kind of maybe kick it like that a little bit and make it exciting for younger people and see what actually goes on because you don't know yeah i mean the the common assumption would be oh you just you just will in a barrow up the hill all day digging mud, digging holes. Like sometimes it's like that, but it's not like that for us, you know. Like Well that's a thing, like they could go and if someone thinks about landscaping, they might jump on an Instagram page and they might only see finished products, but if you're if you're putting out videos like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's only a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, it's not really a priority for me to do it at the moment. I've got <laughs> sort of other things that I want to do, but you know, it, you know, it could be fun. Like, yeah. Maybe I should I should talk to the boys about doing something like that. Yeah, you get <laughs> yeah. them to film some as well. And I'll end up losing them because they'll be movie stars or something. <laughs> they get poached. Yeah, they get poached. They won't want to landscape anymore. <laughs> they'll just want to be bloody travellers, stars. <laughs> so what's next for the nursery? Do you have any plans um, any happening? Well, at the moment, the current, at the moment, we've got some big, big project, big clients that, have kind of given us freedom on stuff, um, which is amazing. It's a dream come true. So is that so they've they've got you to design their Yeah, like, yeah, we do design and yeah. we usually do the install. We don't do installs anymore. We just we just run, stay busy running these plants. Yeah. Um, there's kind of one or two full time gardeners here. All right. All the time. Um, but um, we're, the installs are great when they're, when we're using these amazing trees and putting them together. And like I said before, we're, we're doing a lot of like, you know, millimetre planning and 
you know, combinations of really interesting plants. Um, we, I've kind of got to be there yeah. for that. So, um, yeah, that, that, at the moment we're sort of doing that, which is really cool, really fun. And we're also kind of repairing the nursery. We've had a bit of sort of rain damage and stuff and we sort of, we always patch it. You know, the last yeah. few years we've been sort of patching when it floods out and then, so now we're kind of fixing it properly. So there's a bit of infrastructure going on. Um, and and just buying like crazy. Like I'm just, my whole life is sourcing now, which I love doing. It's amazing. Do you do that all year round or is it all particular year. time? Yep. Never stops, yeah. Ne all, all night. <laughs> Whenever, you know. You know, I, I just, I've got to get on the road and, and hunt for things and go and see people and, you know, stay in weird places and, you know, dig, we dig trees out of, you know, North Queensland or wherever, you know, cranes and things. It's great fun. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, there's things, there's still plants out there that no one, that, you know, I didn't even know were here. I, I get this feeling that in the, 40s, 50s, maybe 60s, when Australian quarantine was pretty, was probably not even there. Yep. People were bringing in all sorts of bits and pieces from everywhere, from Greece and Africa and England and things that got into people's gardens that no one even knew about. There's one-offs and they've seeded and there's, so there's cool stuff out there. i am just got to try and find it. Yeah. You know? And it might mean travelling to Orange or travelling to Strathmore or travelling to... Catherine or wherever, um, which for me is everything, travels everything. I just love an adventure and love just, you know, yeah, finding stuff and finding people. And, and it's not all plants. So I, I don't mind a bit of a party and a bit of a, you know. Yeah, you're in a band. Yeah, I still play, I'm a drummer, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been playing drums since I was young and I sing and drum and I play with all sorts of people every kind of every night. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I generally rehearse every night with okay. different bands. Um, so yeah, that's, that kind of keeps me grounded. That probably stops me from kind of wanting a Ferrari, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Makes me kind of more human. Yeah. Um, and more, and I love soul music. So, um, yeah, but who know, you never know what's going to happen with that. I could get a call and I could be going to Singapore in a week or something or, yeah. which is really fun. Have you been there before? Yeah. Singapore? A few times. Yeah. Yeah. Spent some time there. Done some gigs down, done a gig on the harbour down there. With cool. a few, yeah, pretty amazing. Now, I did notice as well you got some sculptures around here. Do you collect them or do you just buy them? Um, in and they're kind of a, a, I'm getting into sculpt, I'm getting into sculpture. Um, I've kind of been, so we do a little bit of work down the coast, down at Bolly Point for um, Willinga Park. Um, and I'm pretty inspired by, um, well, the owner Terry Snow. He's writing the sculpture and I never really knew what sculpture sort of meant in, and some of his sculptures on that place are unbelievable, wow. like it's out of this world. And, um, where was that? That's at, um, Pauly Point. Pauly Point. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's like an equestrian center, oh, okay. but, um, just amazing, amazing gardens. The whole place is mind blowing architecture and, um, but there's some really beautiful sculptures there and, and they really set the landscape. So I've kind of got a bit of, you know, a bit of inspiration from that. You see the beauty in it. And now I'm kind of getting a bit more experimental with sculpture and using steel and using different materials. Um, a lot of the Ganesh and Shiwa and um, all the statues here are kind of kind of late remnants of stuff that I've imported from Bali. So I used to do a lot of containers. Yep. Out of Bali. I still do a lot of containers, about probably six to eight a year. Mainly pots and landscape kind of um, products, you know. Yeah. A lot of paving stones and things that they just can't get here. Yeah. Uh, I still do a lot of lava stone, which I really, really like. That black stone is just kind of goes with anything. Black, steel, concrete. These are the materials that, that are hot right now, yeah. you know, in landscape. Um so I've gone to that more, whereas the statues are kind of, they're yeah. still beautiful, still amazing, and they might come back around, but I, I don't do Bali stuff too much yep. anymore. Well, like, the sculpture, like you said before, when you're talking about the design bank art, that certainly fits right in there, doesn't 
Um, as in sculpture or yeah. statue? Sculpture. Yeah, Not, sculpture yeah. does. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sculpture's like an essential element of it, you know, like, and, and you see it, like what I'm saying about Rolingo, you'll see kind of these rolling green, smooth shaped hills and then it's just a beautiful bowl of mesh, you know, like, and it just looks incredible. You don't even need gardens. You just yeah, have that. Yeah. It's just, it's been done properly, you know, yeah. so it's minimalistic, I guess. But then using sculpture with gardens is another you know, whole thing. It's it's really it makes it really busy, but that busy is beautiful too. Yeah, that much like uh, landscape design, you, you can see when people know what they're doing and when they don't. So and, yeah, and absolutely. Is yeah, yeah. And sculptures, I think sculpture in garden is something that is when you become at a master level. I think that's when you start to know how to use sculpture in garden mm. properly. Um, it's something that probably 10 years ago I wouldn't have even, I was kind of frightened of and now I'm starting to not be frightened of it because it's a, ri it's a risk. I mean, putting a million dollars sculpture on a paddock is a risk. <laughs> you know, like it's, who, who would do that? But you just do it, you know, if you know how to, you just do it. Yeah, have confidence in your ability. It's the same with music's like that too, you know, you it's, you know, you, when you sing, you just, you, you commit. Yeah. Because you, you know what you can do. But if you don't know what you can, you, you know, it's, it's scary. Yeah, and you're a bit more hesitant and then you don't perform. So, yeah, that, that's probably something that could come is more risk with sculpture and more risk with bigger things. And now we're, we're bigger, now. we do bigger stuff now. We do big stuff, you know. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, so yeah, that's something. But, but yeah, that's quite, that's sort of what's imminent right now is, you know, um, you know, all my guys still want to do land structural landscapes. So I've got to kind of keep them happy with, yeah, burn them out with concreting and yeah. burn them out with cobbling and retaining walls and <laughs> structural headaches. I still love it, you know, but so yeah, that's, that's probably a, a big thing. We're not just plants. Yeah. You know, that's probably sets us apart and that's what's become sort of a, a real success is knowing all that, you know. But yeah. Oh, well, can't yeah. thank you enough for your time. No, that's all right. It's just showing you around this amazing nursery too. Yeah. It's, just, it's at my heaven. Like some of these yeah. things I've got in the front yard. So yeah, it's a, um, some I wish I could have. A special place to be. Well, you know, the whole reason for this place is um, to make people um, – inspired and maybe you could it could be a new obsession and just you just do it yeah. <laughs> i'll try and do a, a victorian version yeah yeah oh you you know there's plenty that grows there yeah there's just a few you know. it's not quite as well yeah right it's more it's more of a um survive rather than thrive kind of mm. setup yeah uh, uh, right. and if anyone wants to get in contact is instagram the best place to um, your... yeah probably the website and yep um, I'm still, I still have my mobile number on there. Um, I don't know how long I can, I can take it, but if I don't, I'll have someone, I'll probably pay, try and poach Rowie. <laughs> he can be your receptionist. Yeah, he's going to be re my receptionist girl. Yeah. So right. yeah, um, yeah, that's the best way is really just either website or, um, yeah, or text message me, you know. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Clint. Thank you, Thank man. you very much. Can't Let's thank you enough. Cheers, man. Thanks. Bye.